For this project, I did mesh simplification using quadric error metrics. I based my implementation on this paper by Garland and Heckbert, which introduces a quadric error metric that approximates how much error is introduced to our mesh by moving one of the vertices. Um, so let's start with uh, decimating this one vertex at a time while I explain how it works. Each vertex is associated with a Q matrix that computes the sum of the squared distances from a point to each of the adjacent triangle's planes. This approximation is a representation of how much the shape of the mesh would change if the associated vertex were moved to a new position, mostly by how far away it is from the original position and angles of the triangles. Note that the distance is zero when inputting the vertex's original position because it's already incident to all of the planes of all the triangles that it's touching. When considering a pair for contraction, I compute the position that introduces the least error when moving the vertices on either side of the edge to that position. The computed vector will be the position of the new vertex after the vertex pair contraction, and the error introduced will be the priority of contracting that edge. Lower priorities get contracted first. I implemented the simplification using vertex pair contraction, which is an abstraction of edge contraction that allows for the contraction of vertices that are close together, but not necessarily connected by an edge. So I was decimating this bunny for the entirety of that explanation. Let's see what the result is. Just looking at the wireframes, we can see that uh, this is a very close approximation of the original mesh. A lot of the features are preserved, including the tubing of the ears, the tail, the hind legs sticking out, the feet at the bottom, the snout, and a small indentation for the eyes. Let's see how it looks not in wireframe mode. You can see that this is a really close approximation of the original mesh, again, with the tubing of the ears, the tail, and all these features. There are a few polygonal artifacts visible, but from far away, it would be very hard to tell. Um, so that was just doing it one edge at a time for long periods of time, uh, but let's get some numbers associated with it. So resetting back to the original mesh, the one on the right is our reference, the one on the left is the one we're decimating. Let's decimate it by 50% of the uh, triangles. You can hardly tell that there's a difference at 50%. So let's try another 50%. Now we're at 25% of the triangles of the original mesh. Quick hop into wireframe mode and you can see how dramatic the change is. But when looking at it, not in wireframe mode, it's a very accurate depiction of what the original mesh looked like. We can continue having the number of triangles until we start to get these uh, polygonal artifacts that are a little bit more unseemly. But still, um, the shape and important features are preserved. So what happens when we start again from our original mesh and then decimate by 90% of the uh, original number of triangles. This is still, uh, despite being significantly few triangles, uh, a pretty close approximation. It still maintains the tubing of the ears, it still maintains the snout, the eyes, the tail, the hind legs, the feet. And if we go down to 5%, again, you can still see the tubing of the ears even though this is becoming N64 levels of boxy. If we go down to 2.5%, we have very significant polygonal artifacts, but you can still see the triangles trying to make the tubes of the ears um, a little bit sticking out for the tail and the hind legs and the feet and the snout. So this quadric error approximation does a really good job of maintaining features and trying to prevent uh, large changes to the shapeliness of the mesh. Thank you so much for watching.